So welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a potentially pointless uh, review of uh, a Nokia Lumia 800. Here is the actual phone, and I'll get to um, the in-depth view in just a minute. First of all, let's talk about the design. So I kind of like this uh, fresh look, this uh, unibody plastic construction with a bit of um, Gorilla Glass on top. By the way, this is a compact premium phone, or at least it was at the time of the launch in 2011. And, uh, well, it's got a minimalist uh, AMOLED uh, display, 3.7 inch in diagonal, with a fairly healthy uh, 480 by 800 uh, resolution and a 5 to 3 aspect ratio with 252 pixels per inch. Now I know I'm just pounding numbers at you, but this was actually Nokia's attempt at uh, revolutionizing the segment and taking the fight to Samsung, but Apple mainly, uh, with a premium flagship device that was also compact. Something that we, well, we still miss today, and more so as phones are getting bigger. But also, I'm getting ahead of myself and losing point. So anyway, the Nokia Lumia 800. Uh, let's look at the design a bit. It's got an interesting flap here on top, which covers the micro USB connector cable. It acts as a hinged, uh, magnetized uh, um, hatch, and you can hear it close open with a bit of a flap, but a nice sturdy feel to it as well. Over here we have a jack port, and here is the SIM tray, or at least it should be, yeah. So how this actually works is you slide the tray uh, to the side and it's also spring operated and pops out for your convenience. So there are the connectors on top, nothing on the bottom but a speaker grill. Um, anyway, this is the main design and I think the party piece here is this case which is looking rather rather shabby but actually it protects the phone quite okay so <laughs> take an exception to this uh, broken um, case here it's rubberized and it's seen some better days probably i'm not the best uh, at handling it because i don't know exactly what the procedure is to mount it it looks flush with the phone and, uh, well, it does a good job of protecting it, so, yeah, good on Nokia on this part. Also, it's very grabby, even though a bit grimy and, uh, um, you know, attracts quite a bit of dirt and grime. So, anyway, the phone itself. Now, I paid for this thing about 30 lei or... Um, six euros something like that yeah and nokia's of this age have a thing where they forget that they have a battery inside they the phone itself this is a design quirk mostly a flaw so the phone itself is uh well it's able to go through its battery up up until the, it depletes it completely but that leaves no juice for the I don't know, the system, the main board to recognize that the charger is being connected on the next charging uh, uh, flow and subsequently this thing refuses to go on even if the screen itself is showing the logo and it's trying to, to boot up. Um, so what I did was I charged it I managed somehow to charge the battery up until, I don't know, 1% or something like that. And being that I'm a complete idiot and a careless gadget hoarder without paying attention to any of the details, I just went on ahead and tried to turn it on. I turned on the device, 
managed to go to some sort of lock screen and a foreign in a foreign language I believe even Finnish or something Nordic and uh, I didn't pay attention I just uh, restarted the device without waiting for it to charge up and now it's stuck in a boot loop so I don't know if I managed to erase the software or the basis of it uh, but I'll show you what I mean. So I have here a power brake. Now for the sake of convenience I'm using a power brake but I promise you it is charged. Uh, actually it might be beneficial because this has low voltage and maybe it could trickle up some juice in the battery though I highly doubt it. And I'll just connect the device and you will see for yourselves what happens. I don't have any uh, outlets lying around here and given that I don't have a long enough cable I'm just going to use this device to power up the phone or at least try to and let's see what happens. So I'm pressing the power button now. By the way this thing is also pretty worn in and uh, collapsed inside the unibody, inside the chassis of the phone let's try to turn it on okay so the phone itself has vibrated once and now is showing that uh, it's charging up or at least that the battery is depleted which might be interpreted as a good sign or rather a bad one so uh, <clears throat> so either the battery is functioning but it's depleted or rather that the battery is charging up. I would say that it's actually not recognizing the battery. But anyway, give it a moment and let's see if something is happening to it and whether we can maybe boot it up. So anyway, I have tried connecting a different cable, this rather poorly designed uh, magnetic connector which in theory sounds really cool but in practice it's actually pointless and idiotic but anyway the phone tried resetting once it vibrated and uh, it went black and uh, when it came time to start up to boot up again it just simply showed the Nokia logo and not much else now interestingly enough there is the the you know the light sensor works because at first the Nokia logo is bright and uh, uh, very well lit and now it's actually uh, dimmed out but that, that in itself does not really mean anything. A huge disappointment on my part and uh, well it's a rather show of recklessness and uh, uh, stupidity because I could have had this phone working even if it might have been locked in some sort of network instead I rushed uh, I rushed it I tried to boot it up too early without having enough battery and to make matter matters worse I tried the when I saw it didn't work I tried the factory reset uh, sequence which is volume up plus start button and I messed up the booting process and well you can see the results I think this thing is quite dead at this point maybe a reset would be in order but I don't have the skills time or finances to take such an endeavor so a good one would fetch around 50 to 100 euros realistically depends on, on the state of the of the you know the general aesthetics of the phone uh, this one is not worth all that much I would suspect the screen itself is worth something I know the touch screen uh, function is okay and maybe the battery who knows now I could try to open it up there's a screw right here on top somewhere around uh, um, beneath this flap then the screen pops up there's another screw right here uh, underneath so it's not so difficult to un unplug it and uh, unravel the phone as it were and try to jump start the battery but it's a lengthy process, requires attention to detail 
and time, time which I don't have because I'm struggling with filming one week, one clip per per week at any rate. So I don't have the time, or um, you, well, you get it. I don't have the time necessary to undertake this um, this endeavor. So I guess out in the bin of pointless phones this goes. But anyway, thanks for watching and remember, I buy, hoard and collect and sometimes recklessly uh, destroy useless obsolete tech stuff so you don't have to. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.